Hello and welcome. In this short video, I'm going to show you a demo of how to run certified processes from Jenkins. What does the testing DLC or software development lifecycle look like for unit level versus applications? Right? So on the left, if we look at a traditional development lifecycle, we get requirements, we architect, we develop, and then from the continuous integration server, say Jenkins, we compile the code and developers do unit tests and maybe they run their unit tests. We could then do some continuous deployment to a staging environment um, and an integration lab, maybe developers write API or functional tests once the application has been deployed some. But traditionally, an SDLC for packaged applications may look a little bit different. A lot of times in our world, the um, concept of compiling the system doesn't happen. We actually move into it in the integration of the UAT labs. So when we talk about continuous delivery and testing the actual application or the implied deployed application, it's a little bit different. What we're interested in doing from our, say, Visual Studio, Jenkins, Team City, Cruise Control, is actually run our certified functional tests, our end-to-end -end tests, make sure we have our requirements validated, via tests, maybe do some exploratory testing also, or production validation. But the key is, when we do CI, CD from the developer standpoint, it's about unit tests and maybe non-deployed or applications deployed enough to have an API. With WorkSoft, we think about continuous delivery testing as part of our CID, CD, CI, CD cycle, and we're very interested in our end-to-end -end functional testing. So a lot of times people talk about this as lights out testing in a continuous deployment lab. So the great things about using WorkSoft and our execution manager is we have interoperability with all sorts of build servers and traditional environments. Um, we provide REST APIs to trigger your tests or you can do them from the command line. What this gives us is the ability to distribute the agents geographically in our test labs or in our virtual workstations and have massive parallel testing capabilities for, to reduce the amount of time to run the tests and automatic load balancing for execution and so forth. So the core idea here is we want to be able to run those end-to-end -end tests but we realize they're in deployed environments and they may take a while to run so we need to run them in parallel. So in my demo, I'm going to show running Certify from our Jenkins server. So I have um, Jenkins on site, and that's where I've got, you know, my build numbers are um, generated. It calls Execution Manager via REST call, and I have basically two labs deployed. I have one in Amazon that tests Certify, running Certify, say, against hosted apps like Incur or Hybris, and then I have on-premise labs also. So the nice thing is because the CICD server can make a REST call to Execution Manager, we realize those labs where you're actually running the test are highly distributed and not on the same server. I'm going to start with the help page. So with Execution Manager 10, we have different requests to actually get a list of our resources available, run them, and get the statuses of them. So what I'm literally going to do is make REST calls into our Execution Manager to run my certified processes. And I'm going to tie this to my Jenkins server. So basically, I have a simple PowerShell script here. I point to my execution manager, um, I add my header data, and actually then invoke a REST method to run them. And then all I do is get, use an execution status call and then loop around that and look for the status of my um, certified processes running. And then based on them passing or failing, I'm literally, literally going to pass or fail my build. So uh, don't worry about this script. I'll put it out into the, um, the customer forum so you can copy and paste it from there and use it in your environments. So what does this actually look like? I've got Execution Manager, and I also have a Jenkins process. So I'll come over here. I've got my build process here. If I go to Configure, what I've done is I've created a simple process, and I'm actually using my build of a Windows PowerShell. So I've got the Windows PowerShell plugged in, and I've placed my process there. Okay. What happens is I can now kick off a build, Build Now, and it starts my build. Basically, the most interesting thing here is that at the beginning of my script, I have a ENV build number. So this is passed in by Jenkins for me. So Jenkins passes the build number in. If we come over to the execution manager, if I look at running now, I can see I've actually kicked off that process from Jenkins. Now, 
The more interesting thing is my test lab in this case is actually running in Amazon. So I have remote execution running in different environments. So this is kind of key to running from Jenkins. I don't care if you're running Jenkins or Team City or Microsoft Team Foundation Center or what have you. The idea is your lab where you're doing your building and the lab where you're actually deploying and running your tests are different locations. So in this case, I'm remotely deploying my test to run, and I can see the execution manager agent starting, and my test is now starting. My test is now executing. I can zoom in and get to see more details to see what's happening in the test itself. Um, what's most important to me is the fact that this test is running unattended. The idea is I can have multiple machines in my environment. In this case, I've got four of them and then I can have a max RDP session. So I've got five sessions per server. So ideally, I can run 20 tests in parallel here. So what's key to my success is that I want my, my regression builds to happen from Jenkins. I need to run them in parallel in a remote lab as fast as possible. So running multiple tests in parallel will help me accomplish that. And this resource window is basically lets me spy on the machine as the test is running to see what's happening. So it looks like my test is almost complete. If I come back to my home page here, what I'll see is the running now, the test is now completed. If I walk backwards over to my Jenkins, over here I can see my test is completed. So I've got build 31 was complete. If I go to my console log, what I do in my simple script is I am provide some information about running the test, Every five seconds I check for status, I can see the status was completed with a pass. So we are going to successfully end this build. What you may notice is over in, in my build here, I do have some failed tests here. So if my certified processes fail, I will technically fail the build also. So this allows me to control, say, my CI, CD um, processes. If Jenkins passes or fails the build, the next thing should happen in my workflows themselves. Now. We realize that this is um, something that's very operational in nature. And a lot of times the people who are interested in this are not core certified users. So what I've done here is I just have a simple Power BI dashboard that shows me for my build numbers what's actually happening here. So a person who's not familiar with, C with um, say, certify and execution manager, say someone in the build architecture team, they're very interested in making sure understanding how many tests are running and how many passing or failing they can actually see by build number here that I ran this test just now as build 31 it also passed as 32 earlier it failed with different text so the idea is we want to provide the ability to run all of our certified processes on an event basis and track it with a build number so I've done this with Jenkins I defined a Jenkins build defined a power my Windows PowerShell put it into there passed in my build number and then I run a REST call to a remote execution manager. In this case, I'm actually asking, asking my execution manager to run over an Amazon, so a completely remote deployed lab, run my processes, and pass back pass or fail to my build number. And then I've got a dashboard where someone can see what's happening. Um, the nice thing is they can do this all in a very automated way. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you want the actual source for the um, script itself, go look into the um, portal.worksoft.com into the customer knowledge base and I've pasted several flavors of it there for your consumption. Thank you very much.